Exodus 23 and the verse is 25. Just try and make it a bit cool. 23 and 25. If you can kill all the echo because of the Amen. Praise the Lord. Let me have somebody reading for us very quickly. 23 and 25 of Exodus from any version. God will bless you as you read it in the name of Jesus. And ye shall Exodus 23 verse 25. It says And ye shall serve the Lord your God that ye shall serve the Lord your God. And he shall bless thy bread. And he shall bless thy bread. And thy water. And thy water. And I will take sickness away from the midst and of thee. And he shall take sickness away from your midst. There shall nothing cast their young nor barren in thy land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. That nobody would bury their young ones. And the number of your days I will fulfill, meaning you will live long. Mm -hmm. I will send my fear before thee. I will send my terror before you. And will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come. And I will destroy any enemy that is gathering against you. And I will make all thy enemies turn their back unto thee. And if there is any group of people planning to come to attack you, I will make them to turn their back from your life. And this will be your testimony in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, ministry is not having the burden. Now, follow me carefully. Ministry is not having the burden for the work. Ministry is not even preaching. Ministry is not singing. Ministry, if you ask me, is not even expressing your love for God. Ministry is accomplishing a divine task. When somebody says, I'm in ministry, they need to identify what is the assignment, what is the task God has put ahead of you that you must accomplish. And when you accomplish that task, that is when we say, you are in ministry. Are we together here? Are we together up to there? Now, kingdom of God is an invisible kingdom, like we said last time. And in most cases, you may misrepresent the kingdom because you faith in, in truth, number one, and in the spirit. So, for you to serve God well, you need to understand what I call the law of spirituality. You must be very sensitive. Don't do things because you are doing, even when you're offending somebody. Oh, hello? Hello? Be spiritually sensitive. You don't just do things because you're doing, even when it is offending. Don't do things because you're doing, even when it's not blessing somebody. You must be spiritually sensitive because the God that you worship is a spirit and them that are worshiping must be spiritually and alert to be able to worship him correctly. So the law of spirituality is very keen kingdom service. So whatever you do as your service to God is a blessing to the people and God is glorified. Praise the Lord forever. So God is a spirit and them that worship him must worship in truth and in spirit. Now what is spirituality? What is spirituality? Let me explain something. Spirituality is the likeness of God. Living like God. It is developing the nature of God. When we say somebody is spiritual, we are saying the person has the likeness of God. Because God is a spirit. The person is living like God. The person has developed the nature of God. To be spiritual is to be filled by the fullness of God. When must please his people. Amen. Number two is the law of divine direction. 
If you want to serve God well, you must understand what we call the law of divine direction. The law of divine direction. Oh, somebody say amen. I know, I know some of us, you have been working all through and you're tired. But you can shout a better amen. Oh, you can shout a better amen. You need to understand the law of divine direction. If you want your service to God, to please God, that service must be done with understanding of divine direction. When you miss divine direction, you will miss your placement in life. Anybody that miss divine direction will miss their placement in life. And I pray that you will not miss your divine direction in the name of Jesus. In the kingdom of God, nothing happens until it's commanded. Lamentation chapter 3 verse 37. 3 verse 37. He said, who says it and it comes to pass unless God has commanded it? Are we together here? In the kingdom of God, nothing does happen until it is commanded by the Lord. Now, if you are not directed by God and you are doing things because you felt like doing it, that is when you fail because you are never led by him. But if you are doing things under the leading of the spirit of God, and that is when you begin to enjoy the things that God wants you to enjoy, and I pray you will never miss your direction in the name of Jesus. So when you are directed by God, you don't waste time. When you are directed by God, you don't do what? Waste time. Chapter 3, verse 37, do you have lamentation? Get it for me. So nothing happens until it's commanded. So if you're not following the leading of the Spirit, if it's not divinely directed, you miss your direction. 3 verse 37. Verse 7. Mm. It says, He has hedged me about, but I cannot get out. He has no, made my... No, no. Seven. Yes. 37. Who is, who is he that says... And it comes to pass. Who is he that says it and it comes to pass? When the Lord commands it not. When the Lord is not the one who commanded it. So you must be led. Who says it and it comes to pass and the Lord did not command it? So when you are serving God and you are I pray you will not do things contrary to the will of God. Law number three is the law of divine timing. For you to serve God well, you must understand what we call divine timing. Divine? Now you need to know that we serve a God of time and seasons. At what time is God saying what? At what season is God saying what? Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1. He's saying there is a time for everything. Don't read it. Many of us, our breakthroughs are not with God. Our breakthroughs is in the timing of God. Can I say it again? Our breakthroughs are not with God. Our breakthroughs are in the timing of God. So once you are occupied. Mm. He has made everything beautiful in his time. He has made everything beautiful in his time. Also he has put eternity in their hearts mm. except that no one can find out the work that the God does from beginning to end. Now the challenge is God has made everything beautiful in his time except that nobody is picking that signal. That's the challenge. I the know Lord, that it's okay, it's okay. The Lord has made it so beautiful. So it is your work to connect to that timing of God. But the challenge is 
we don't understand the dynamics of the timing of God. Everything has been made beautiful in his time. But we don't know where and how to connect it in the right timing. So then you delay and then you begin to run after time. We delay, then we begin to cry when our blessed pray to not pass you by. Chapter 2 verse 4 of John, very quickly. 2 verse 4 of John the Gospel. Jesus said unto her, And he said unto her, Woman, woman what have I to do with thee? Mm. My hour is not yet come. My hour has not yet come because I have an hour that I do particular things. Is a God of times and seasons. Is not yet in my season to do this thing. Woman, you want me to do this, but it's not in the time I operate with seasons. It's not in the season. I pray you will not delay then begin to cry for seasons to work for your in favor of you. I pray you will not delay and cry seasons to work in your favor. I pray that you will not delay and cry for seasons to work in your favor. Prayer is important, brethren. But prayer doesn't change the mind of God. What prayer does, it aligns you to his will. What prayer does, number four, the law of faith. If you want to serve God well, you must understand what we call the law of faith. Hebrew 11 verse 1 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. So you need to understand the dimension step by faith. Confidence in Jesus Christ. Faith is confidence in Jesus Christ that he will do what he said he will do. That is faith. Faith is confidence in Jesus Christ that he will do what he promised that he will do. That is faith. Having confidence in Jesus that whatever he said he will fulfill, he will fulfill it. And you are confident, you don't check your environment, you don't check what people say, you don't check what people think. Your mind is made up. That is faith. Faith, number two, is believing so even if the Lord said it, I must obey it. Faith. Number three, faith. If you can commit God to do the impossible, we say you have faith. Any woman, any man that can commit God to do what no man can do, that person, we call those people are women and men of faith. May you be one of them. May you be one of them. May you have the ability to commit God to do what no man can do. To do the impossible. There are things that are known to be impossible. When you receive faith, you can command God to do them. Oh, I thought, transport your blessing from the realm of the unseen to the realm of the seen. Faith is the divine vehicle that brings your blessing from the supernatural to the natural. Faith is that which translates what is in the spiritual to be in the natural. Faith. Even as you teach us about kingdom service, Lord, tonight, we have also learned that we need to have faith and depend on you. And we have realized that trusting men is a failed mission. We have learned that trusting on men is a failed mission. We need to trust you. Teach us how best to depend on you. And let there be a token, let there be a sign that you are fighting for us and that you are on our side. Father, we thank you. For it is settled in Jesus' mighty name. Put your hands together for Jesus.